Hello, I'm going to be reading Chapter 5 of The Last Kids on Earth. Let's get started. The undead freaks come at me in a wave. First, an old man zombie. He's got one eyeball dangling out and it bounces against his cheek. He lunges at me, still making a sound like glug. I dive under his outstretched hands. Coming up, I'm staring at an old lady zombie. Must be like 90. She gets my shirt, but I shrug it off. I can see the back door to Quinn's house, and I spot a direct path, the picnic table. I dash across. Crack! I leap off the picnic table using one zombie's bald, moldy head as a little step and grab onto the tire swing. Quinn, open the door! Quint yanks open the sliding door just as a hulking, half-run zombie man, zombie man steps in front of it. His throat is missing, just a bunch of gnarly old flesh there. He comes at me, practically jumping. I've got no, no choice but... Rack! Quint slams the patio door shut behind me, just in time, too. Three zombies stumble into the glass and bounce off like the bad three stooges bit. Quint slides his big kitchen table against the glass, a makeshift barricade. I get to my feet, eyes wide. I can't believe it. It's him. It's really him. Quint Baker, the best friend. Hair smells like movie theater butter. Hair smells like movie theater popcorn butter. Old man cap. Pocket watch for looking dorky. Wears a lab coat as a jacket for no good reason. Non-athlete's foot, always working on a new gadget or ex experiment. I was afraid you were dead this whole time, I exclaim. A scientist never truly dies, Quint says. He lives on through his research, I groan. But yes, I'm also regular, normal, alive, Quint says. I want to groan again, but I can't help but laugh. I'm just so happy to see my buddy. Secret handshake time, buddy. We have a secret handshake? Um, yeah, remember? We worked on it that whole afternoon one time. We had that big plan. We were gonna do the handshake when we passed in the hallway so people would know we had cool secrets going on and we were up to stuff. Remember? Quinn scratches his head. Vaguely remember. How'd it go again? Hmm, um, I think you grabbed my ankle and I finger flicked your elbow. There was also some ear tugging, I think. Quint looks confused. Just tug my ear, Quint. I am not tugging your ear. Come on, just a little, little tug to, the, to get the handshake started. Jack, I think you should just, I think you should give up on the secret handshake. I shrug. We bump fists. Can't go wrong with the classics. I follow Quint up to his room, the lab as he calls it. On the way upstairs, I pull out my list of feats and check off the box next to make it to Quint's house without dying. Another feat down, another, another pat on the back for old Jack. Quint's house, the same house where I spent most every day after school the past six months, feels different now. But I can't quite wrap my noggin around why. Whoa, you've been partying, partying pretty hard, huh? Where do you hide the girls? This is all research. I've learned much. It looks we have three, possibly four creatures in the Mammalia classic class, Quint says. Hold up, stop the train, I say. I thought we were playing video games. Quint grins, a ploy. Sigh, I was right. It was a trap. Quint continues, I'm about to begin classifying them by genus and species, then grading their skill sets and abilities. Grading their skill sets and abilities? You mean like baseball players? I ask. Quint rolls his eyes. No, Jack, not like baseball players. Like X-Men, I ask? Quint grins, a little. Hey, I say, suddenly realizing why his house seems so different. Where are your parents? Quint is silent for a moment. He stares at the floor, like he's studying it. 
They were on vacation, remember? So I don't know. I'm hoping they're out there somewhere, maybe out west, safe. Oh, I say softly. And what about that weird babysitter they left you with? Oh, she got zombified straight away. I laugh, sort of half laugh, no less, one third laugh. After that, we just sit for a while, neither of us, neither of us really speaking. I cough into my hand and say, hey Quint, is it true? Always on the news those first few days. That the monsters and zombies came to the East Coast first, so everyone went west and out there the army was like prepared to stop them? Quint looks up at the ceiling. He thinks for a moment. I have no idea. I only know as much as I see. And what do I see? Monsters and zombies everywhere. Very few survivors. Internet down, cell phones down. No way to know anything else. Do you think maybe we should try to go west, I ask, even though I don't really want to leave? Clint shakes his head. Absolutely not. Safest option is to stay here and stay safe. If help is going to come, we should be in a secure location, waiting for it. We sit in silence again for a while longer. Clint keeps his nose buried in his research while I half-heartedly flip through comic books. The weight of all this horror, the missing parents, the, the zombified babysitter, fills the room. I can barely breathe. I need to get Quint out of this house. Finally, I stand up and say, trying to sound cheerful, let's split, bud. We'll go back to the treehouse. You have to see it. It's tricked out and way better than it used to be. But Quint, of course, is not having it. All my research is here. Can't leave. Not possible. Buddy, I say, I figured out how to make my own mountain dew. Quint looks up. He blinks, he blinks twice. I'll gather my th things. Quint, buddy, I trust you in all things, but you got a plan for getting this card all the way across town without getting us eaten? Butterfingers, Quint stole from my locker two months ago. Some junk we don't need. Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Thanks, Quint's dad. More junk we don't need. Quint says he has a means of transportation, so I follow him down to the pitch black garage. It smells like gasoline and sawdust. He flicks the light switch and what I see, man, I have to pick my jaw up off the floor. Not literally, that is something zombies do. I'm staring at a bad to the bone post-apocalyptic vehicle. I began with my mom's pickup truck, Quint says, and I just started adding things. I whistle, impressed. Now pay attention, Jack, he says, and he begins detailing the truck's gizmos and gadgets. It's amazing what a smart kid can do when no one's bugging him to finish his homework or change his socks. Running my hands over the truck, I ask, so what do you call it? Big Mama, Quinn says. After, well, my big mama. I nod, it's true, his mom was quite hefty. Perfect name, buddy. Sorry, I'm not zooming that picture. Big Mama, the post-apocalyptic ride. Aero turret, bottle rocket launchers, fuzzy mice for science, many, many, many boxes of brown sugar, cinnamon pop tarts, storage for loot nabbed from Best Buy, butter slick slingers, tire chains for rolling over monsters, reinforced windows keep zombies out, plus an ejector seat, just kidding, Batter battering ram for battering monsters. Horn plays the Star Trek theme. Skull hood ornament. Not real, just a candle. Fuzzy dice for looking cool. We spend the next hour stuffing all of Quint's research and equipment and action figures into Big Mama. Once we have it all loaded up, Quint pauses. Um, one thing. Do you have any idea how to drive? Dude, we're 13 years old, I say. Quint's face sags, right. So I've played like 200 hours of Need for Speed. Of course I know how to drive. I'm practically an expert. Jack, the smash. We get back to the treehouse with no major issues. Only roadblock is a zombie horde outside the old skating rink, rink that forces me back toward the center of town. 
back past the ruins of, C of the CVS. Passing the store's remains, I slow down just long enough to see if Blarg is still hanging around. I don't see him. That worries me. Blarg is out there, somewhere, and he has my scent. But I push the thought up to the back of my mind. Today is a good day, and I'm not ruining it with thoughts of ginormous beasts. And tonight is even better. Clint and I are cooking up Mr. Goodbar's s'more, Goodbar, Mr. Goodbar's s'mores, and getting ready to play some Mario Kart. For the first time in a long while, everything feels right. Clint has been found, and now I'll use his mega smart science brain to help me find Jun Del Toro and complete the ultimate feat of apocalyptic success. And that's it for chapter five. Bye.